Hi, it's Robin. I recently made a video about a 32-byte Commodore 64 program. I was contacted by the creator of that program, Logiker, and we've made some new discoveries that I want to share with you and some clarifications about what I showed in that video. But first, I want to show you a 4, or if you include the 2-byte header, a 6-byte C64 demo that Logiker brought to my attention. It's called Non Monochrome. And I'm just going to load that. The file size is 6 bytes, and that includes the 2 byte load address header that all C64 program files have. So there's 4 bytes of actual code and or data. Curiously, you don't actually have to run it to start the program. Even just pressing return will start it. So you see the borders are flashing in a pattern. Now, this might not be the most amazing demo, but the fact that it's only four bytes of code is pretty impressive. Just the code to change the border color is a minimum of three bytes. That only leaves one byte left over, even if you were just to loop immediately which takes two bytes, plus there's this sort of auto run feature. So there must be some trickery going on here. And of course there is. In fact, if we press stop, you can see that the pattern changes a little bit in the border. And if I hold down stop and press restore, it seems that the program is stopped, but in fact, it's still resident. It's actually more like a virus than a demo. If I press return again, <laughs> it starts again. So if I actually press my reset button on my cartridge expander, then the program's finally disabled. This very short program is by Non De Non, which is an alias of Nick Montfort, who is a professor of digital media at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I'm a fan of his work, especially this book that he organized and co-authored called 10 Print Character String 205.5 plus <laughs> Random 1, semicolon, colon, go to 10. Might not surprise you that I really like this book, and I highly recommend it. Though you should really watch out for page 229. It has a bunch of errors. Okay, so let's figure out what makes this program work. So if we load non-monochrome, we'll see that loads into zero page at 7e hacks. And that's actually part of a little routine that lives in zero page all the time, part of the kernel basic operating system. So if we disassemble starting at 7.3, this is a routine called char get or character get. So this routine is central to the operation of BASIC. It's involved in getting the next character, part of the parsing of any BASIC command, whether you type it in immediate mode or if it's part of a BASIC program. And because it's so central, they decided to keep it in zero page. I'm not convinced that it was actually worth using this many bytes of zero page for this routine for the speed increase, but that's what they did. This increment 7a and increment 7b are basically self-modifying code that increment this pointer here right after the load a. It's actually just loading an absolute address, but the self-modifying code and the fact that this routine is in RAM rather than in ROM means that this is essentially a pointer, and it executes faster than if they were using indirect indexing, which would be the normal way of doing this. The increment changes this address, so next cycle through, instead of load A at 200, it would be load A at 201 hex, 202, and so on. So normally this would fetch the next character that's being processed or being parsed, and then there's a comparison with 3A, which checks for a character greater than Petsky 9, 
which would normally cause the routine to exit, but instead, this is where this little demo has been injected into this code. And instead, it's storing the character in the border color register. So that accounts for three of the four bytes loaded. And then the final byte is this 50, which is a branch if overflow clear. And because overflow is always going to be clear, this essentially works like a branch always. And that F0 was already there, which branches back to the beginning. So by overwriting those four bytes, this program has been converted just into an infinite loop that just keeps incrementing through memory and wrapping around back to zero and stores whatever the low byte is of memory in the color register. And the reason it auto executes when you press return is that this code is always executed when you press return because it is part of the parser. So if we want to make this a little bit more impressive, we can just change this 20 to 21, which will cause the memory that's being loaded to be stored in the screen color register, which will cause the whole screen to flash. Okay, so exit. Okay, so if you're sensitive to flashing, please look away. And there's the whole screen flashing. And the reason it has that sort of rhythm to it, most of the time it's green and gray, and that corresponds to what RAM is initialized to on this particular computer most of the time. And then there's a more colorful burst. That's while it's displaying parts of RAM, such as zero page and the ROMs, that will have more seemingly random values in them, which of course aren't actually random. So this loop we're seeing that's roughly a second and a half long is the length of time it takes the 6510 processor to loop through memory and read each value and the bit of overhead there with that compare and branch. Neat little four byte demo. Can anybody come up with a more interesting demo with only four bytes of code or a six byte file size? Note that this program couldn't be loaded anywhere else in memory, or at least I don't think it could be. The load address is a critical part of this program because that allows it to be injected right here into this character get routine. And now a few more thoughts about that 10 print orthogonal 32 byte program. Well, so note, I'm going to turn off the computer for several seconds to give a chance for the RAM to reset. And again, I'm loading from my SD card. I usually don't show this part, but just to be completely transparent. Okay, so I've now changed to the directory where I have this program. And I'm going to load 10 print into memory. Comma 8, comma 1. And once again, you'll see that the program does hang. This was my only criticism of the program that didn't seem to work on real hardware. I had also mentioned that the program seems to crash if you edit it. That is not a criticism of the program. That was just an interesting side effect of the optimizations and part of my discovery of how that program worked. But to be clear, my only criticism of this program was that it didn't seem to work on real hardware, or at least it didn't seem to work on my Commodore 64C. But I have more insight now into why this crashes on this computer. So I'll just reset again. I deliberately didn't show the disk directory the previous time I loaded it. This time I'm going to load the disk directory and show it to you. And now I'm going to load 10 print comma 8 comma 1. And this time it didn't hang. I'll list it. And we'll see that the program is here, but there's a bunch of junk after this. And that's the old disk directory still in memory, even though we loaded another program. Normally this would be wiped out. Okay, so what's going on? We'll take a look at the monitor here. And display from 800 on. And this is where the program loads. 
And as discussed last time, the zero byte marks the end of the program line. And one of the optimizations is that the following zero bytes were cut off the file to save two bytes. Normally these next two bytes would be zero, zero if the program's over, but instead we see a line link to 083F. And if we scroll down to 083F, right here, we'll see that right in front of it is a zero byte. So what's happening is that whenever the C64 loads a file, even a comma eight comma one file, the basic interpreter tries to relink all the lines of basic. That is, it traverses the basic program and hunts for these zero byte markers and then creates pointers to the next line of basic. That is the code immediately following the zero byte that indicates the end of the line. So right here is the first link to 0820. And that goes to right here. You can see right here is the zero byte. So this is the beginning of the next line of basic. This should be a zero pointer, but instead it's now point to 083F, which is here following that second line and so on. What happens during this relinking process is that the interpreter is willing to search up to 255 bytes past the end of the line, and it expects to find a zero somewhere within that range. If it doesn't, it actually hangs. And that's exactly what's happening when we try to load this on this computer when it's freshly rebooted. There are no zero bytes in memory. If we scroll on, we'll see that's full, as I showed before, of this 55AA pattern. And that's why it hangs on this computer. But if you do anything to add zeros within 255 bytes of the end of the program that's being loaded, then it will link OK, although in this case it's linking it and including the garbage because it's actually seeing that directory listing as valid basic code. So if we fill memory from 0801 to 09FF with any non zero byte, we'll just choose FF, then I'll exit. And I'll load 10 print. You can see that it hangs. So if we look at memory again, here's the end of the line. And then the linker tries to look through all this code looking for a zero byte and does not find one up to this point, which is 100 hex, 100 hex past the end of the program. So if I now fill from 0920 with zero byte, and we'll exit, I can even reset. Now if I load 10 print, comma eight, comma one, it still hangs. We're almost there. So you see from here, that's actually, I guess, 100. Here's the zero byte. Okay, so that's actually 256 bytes now. So I think if I just zero out one more byte, Reset, load, temp print. Oh, <laughs> back into the monitor. Okay, for sure this time. I'll zero one more byte.
There. <laughs> okay. And popping back. Okay, okay, we can list it. There's the program, but still picking up some garbage. In fact, these uh, all these little pie symbols, that is the FF that we put in memory. So it's basically interpreting all those FFs as line number 65535. That's FFFF in hex. And then a line full of pi, mmm, pi, until that zero byte. And just to look at that. So this is the normal end of line one. Now we have a link to 091F as the next line of basic. Let's go ahead to 091F. That's this byte right here. And there you go. There's the zero byte to terminate it. And then two more zero bytes here and here mean it's the end of the program. Okay, now how about that criticism that I don't like that doesn't work on a real C64? Well, I am swapping out my 64C and here's a trusty old silver label bread bin. Okay, picture quality is pretty bad here, but that's normal for these machines. Okay, let's try load 10 print. Does it work? Yes. I'll run it. It works fine. So what's the deal? Well, again, let's go into the Super Snapshot Monitor and look at RAM. And we'll see here that RAM is filled with this pattern instead. FF00 for the most part, and then occasional changes, like an extra bit set here. Well, there's quite a big difference, I don't know, th 3, 9, FB, but overall, you can see the pattern is lots of zeros and lots of Fs and occasional strangeness. Now here's a whole bunch with bit 3 set. But anyway, the, the bottom line is this Breadbin C64 has lots of zero bytes available, so therefore the load works fine. So it depends on the type of RAM chips in your particular C64, and quite possibly on the motherboard revision as well. I was talking to Adrian Black from his digital basement about it a bit, and he was saying that each bit in RAM is essentially a tiny little capacitor, and each one, depending on how it's driven, has its own pattern that it would power up to. And there's some randomness in it as well. Now on my 64C, it's very solid AA and 55, and that's an alternating bit pattern of 101010. The RAM in this Commodore 64 tends to come up all as ones or all as zeros with these random variations here. So I don't fully understand what's happening internally in those RAM chips and why it varies as much as it does. The boot routines in the kernel operating system do not clear RAM when you power up or press the reset button, except for small sections like a lot of the RAM from screen memory down. So that's from this just below basic 0800 and down. A lot of that is initialized at boot, but all the RAM in the basic space is just left however it is, however those RAM chips came up when power was applied to them. And so I'm happy to report that 10 print orthogonal does work on many real Commerce 64s. So it doesn't completely invalidate the fact that it doesn't work on my 64C, but the fact is Logiker really did test it on real bread bins that he owns. Logiker had some of his friends try and all their computers, I think maybe between two guys, it was another eight computers or so, 
they all had zeros or sufficient zeros in memory for the program to load OK. Hey, okay, so thanks very much to Logiker. I think we both learned a bit from these experiments, learning what happens when you load a file and the different behavior of different individual Commodore 64s. And thanks to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.